Monday's full year diluted headline earnings per share declined by 8.6% to 63 euro cents. The South African paper maker saw underlying operating profit fall by 9% to 568 million euros. Monday declaring a total dividend of 28 euro cents. That's up 8% from the previous period. Let's dissect these earnings now. David Hawthorne, CEO at Monday, with me in studio. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So, it's, you know, it's really not, I suppose, accurate to call uh, Monday a South African paper maker given the fact that only 10% of your Earnings come from South Africa right now, 568 million uh, euros overall, uh, and 538 million of those coming from Europe and international operations. Uh, but walk us through the key drivers, the key pressure points that continue to, uh, to relate to the drop in earnings. Uh, the, the main reason was the first quarter of last year was a very difficult quarter. You know, in 2011, in October, more or less, we had the European financial crisis that really crystallized and reduced demand in many parts of the world, including Europe and Eastern Europe, which for us is a big market. That led to drop-off in volumes, prices followed suit. So we started 2012 on a low. The first mm -hmm. quarter we had commercial downtime, couldn't sell what we could make, and prices were down. Into the second quarter, volumes came back as, as confidence recovered, and then pricing followed suit. So for the year as a whole, we had prices well below the prior year, and a very slow start to the year. But the second half of the year was good. Mm -hmm. The fourth quarter was a strong finish to the year. You know, Q2 of last year was well above the first half and well above the, the prior year's second half. Mm -hmm. So we finished the year well on the back of a slow start, effectively. Looking at the business as it stands right now, two-thirds, 67% uh, packaging, and the rest is paper. And, of course, that has been a strategic focus for you to move away from paper. Um, but just talk to us about the, the paper environment right now. What are your expectations for volumes and prices this year? Well, I, I mean, for paper both packaging paper and uncoated fine paper, the two different types of paper. So as you correctly say, two-thirds of our business is now packaging related. Within the packaging space, we make the raw material and we make the converted product itself. So within the packaging area, corrugated paper, we have really two different sub-segments. On the virgin side, the demand is very good, supply is constrained, and pricing has been positive, very good pricing environment. On the recycled side, there's been surplus supply throughout last year. Some capacity closure taking place recently. Prices in, are going up right now. Capacity closure at Mondi or no, globally? No, outside of Mondi, so globally, or in Europe as a whole. So prices are on the up at the moment, but there is more capacity coming in later this year. So we're just cautious about what that impact that would have on the market. I, I suppose what really stands out about Mondi in, in this year was the acquisitions uh, that you made, 1.2 billion uh, euros worth. Um, walk us through what you're going to do with those acquisitions now. Of course, you've got Nordinia, mm. Europac, and then Mondi Suisi. Yeah, I mean, certainly Nordini is the big one, so let me focus on that. We've gone into consumer packaging, and that's the big quantum shift in our strategic focus, as it were, is to increase our consumer packaging focus. And the reason why we've done that is that consumer packaging is a very good fundamental growth product. So we're talking about stand-up pouches for soups, for dog pet food, for example. And it also goes into applications into the hygiene area, um, you know, wrapping for femcare products, uh, components for diapers all the stretchable film and those types of applications. Those enjoy very good growth. They enjoy growth rates of 3 to 6%, both in the mature world and even better in the emerging world. And you know, what we've been looking for in Mondi is products that enjoy, and geog geographies, that enjoy structural growth. Mm -hmm. A lot of the paper industry is in structural decline. We've sought to avoid that. We've exited newsprint over the years. We've reduced our exposure, not by getting out of, but by growing the packaging business. Reduced exposure to uncut fine paper to now less than a third of the group and packaging is now two-thirds. And our kind of fine paper exposure that we're left with is in South Africa, Russia, and Eastern Europe, where there is still demand growth. Mm -hmm. So we've really sought to position the group in a, in a way that enjoys structural growth, and that's why the packaging acquisitions have happened. They're on track from a financial point of view. Mm -hmm. Synergies are up. We're going to get 30% better synergies than we had projected. So we're pretty confident of, of delivering what we expected to from those businesses. A greenfield plant, uh, Nordinia has a greenfield plant in China. Yes. Uh, so talk to us about the opportunities that you see in that market right now, the type of production that will come through from there, and then upscaling that. I mean, the reason why we've gone to China is, is, is again in the diaper components business. So we make the, we extrude the film in, in Germany, uh, and this is a one-way stretch film that Procter & Gamble will use in their diaper to get stretchiness into the Pampers brand. Um, they've asked us to come to China. We've gone there. We've put up a plant that will be commissioned by the end of this year. It's a small investment, 20 million euro, but it has revenue potential of 200 million euro because we have the latent capacity in Germany from the extruding point of view. Mm -hmm. So we'll be extruding the film, sending the film across to China, and then laminating the film and cutting it and then sending the components off to Procter & Gamble. 
So a fantastic entry point into China. We don't like China generally from a paper packaging point of view. Why is that? Well, there's no competitive cost advantage. Mm -hmm. I mean, China, you know, electricity is expensive. They haven't got trees. You have to import the paper, the waste paper from somewhere else. So to make the raw material for packaging in China doesn't excite us at all. To make on a selected high-value component element like this, where you are servicing Procter & Gamble's Chinese diaper requirements, that we find pretty fascinating. So, you know, this does provide a platform that could then offer further growth potential in those types of areas or in the high-impact consumer packaging space of, you know, the pouches, stand-up pouches and the like. So that's the path that we're looking to go into. We don't want to get into the commodity business of industrial packing in China, packaging in China. That's not, not a place where we think you can make money.